Welcome to ID the Future, a podcast about intelligent design and evolution. Welcome to ID the Future, a podcast of the Discovery Institute Center for Science and Culture. I'm Joshua Yunkin. Today we're pleased to present another interview with CSC Senior Fellow, Dr. Michael Denton. Dr. Denton has been a medical geneticist for over 20 years, a researcher on the mammalian eye, and also the author of two books, Evolution, A Theory and Crisis, and more recently, Nature's Destiny. Dr. Denton holds an MD from Bristol University and a PhD in biochemistry from King's College London. On today's podcast, Dr. Denton foresees the downfall of the mechanistic view, at least in cell biology, and the exhaustion of materialist researches into the origin of life. Conversely, Dr. Denton finds validity in Dr. Stephen Meyer's book, The Signature in the Cell, and in the proposition that intelligence was at work in the origin of life and well before. The mechanic, mechanistic reductionist explanation of cells has really broken down. When you look at the, the literature now, more and more the bulk properties to explain the higher, higher structures of the cytoarchitecture of cells, you've got to look at collectives, the properties of collectives and higher order things, right? You can't see it from below. So this is, in fact, the beginning of a, a long process. It might take, in mainstream science, it might take, you know, one or two decades. But certainly you're seeing at the level of the cell a breakdown of that great mechanistic, mechanical idea which has dominated science, certainly in the last century, in the DNA age, the genetic age, and everything's in the genes sort of thing, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You're seeing that, in fact, everything isn't in the genes, everything isn't in the molecules, everything isn't in the bricks. The architecture mm-hmm. of the house right. is somewhere else. This is what Aristotle said, of course. Mm-hmm. The former mm-hmm. is an active principle in nature which organizes matter into the form of a living thing. But you can replace his former with biophysical laws and laws of form, laws which apply to matter at higher levels. Okay, so these laws take the base matter and pull it into particular biological forms. Just just as Aristotle's form was an active principle in nature, took base matter, as he called it, and put it into the form of a living thing. I think these ideas are now, you can see them hovering now on the horizon. And they're all possibilities where cell biology is moving towards this, these, these sorts of ideas. In other words, basically what it is, is that there are causal factors in addition to what happens at the molecular level. Mm -hmm. And these are not mysterious. They are physical laws, the properties of the higher order, emergent properties of things. But it's very difficult to think about this because we all think, when we think of a complex system, we think of a machine. And so, you know, to start thinking of something that's not a machine is a big paradigm shift, right? You know, and also it's not exactly clear where this is all going, you see. But what's happening is the machine analogy, I think, is failing. I must point out, however, that doesn't mean that the complexity of living systems, the adaptive complexity of living systems, which is analogous to a machine, I mean, a ribosome is like a machine, right. as much of the cells is like a machine, right? That also has to be explained. Right. And this is complex specified information in the cell, right? right? So that requires an explanation as well. And as I've said earlier, I don't think this can be explained credibly by the Darwinian framework. But what I would say is that, in fact, there are also higher causal factors involved in the generation of biological systems, which are imminent in nature. And they also can't be explained in terms of Darwinism, because Darwinism can't explain the laws of physics. (laughs) What you're you're saying cuts very much against Darwinism, but does it cut in favor of intelligent design? I wrote a book called Nature's Destiny, okay, which is looking at the fitness of the laws of nature for life as it exists on Earth. And um, this line of thinking leads to that sort of idea. So it does lead to a cosmic design, that the laws of nature are ordered for biological systems as we see on Earth, actually. So I think it does lead to a, another form of intelligent design, hmm. the idea that the design of the biological world is partly imminent in nature itself in the laws of nature, the laws of form, as three Darwinian biology would have expressed it. So yes, I do think it has intelligent design implications as well. Not quite as directly as, I mean, how do you explain the origin of life? Right. I mean, how do you explain the origin of a ribosome or some very complicated genetic system, right? 
which you can you can say, well, I find it very difficult to believe that could come about by chance. I mean, that's that's my intuition. Mm. However, I think that in fact Richard Owen and uh, Agassiz were certainly theists, strong theists, mm. who and they were typologists, um, and so they would have said these basic patterns. The laws of nature are ordered. There's a special lot of autonomous laws of nature which apply to the biomatter mm. and ordered in various ways. And they would have certainly seen these laws of form as um, part of God's creation of the world sort of thing. Whether you can argue specifically for intelligent design from this position, it's slightly more tricky because in fact basically you're saying well you know there's a certain degree of the order of biological systems which is sort of inherent in nature itself i personally think that it's all part of a huge the universe is is, is is uniquely fit for biological systems like us i mean you create the properties of water I and mean, we are warm blooded animals and we lose we lose heat by the evaporation of water and we have Water has a high thermal capacity, so when you run for a bus, you don't overheat and things like this. Yeah. So that this this is the, this is the sort of this is the sort of the fitness of the universe for biological systems like ourselves, right? And I think that in fact, what I would say would be the basic design of the biological world. Some of the basic designs of the basic types, perhaps many cell types, are sort of in a sense partly imminent in nature itself. And because it all fits together, I can see that you can build some sort of cosmic design theory based on sort of the fitness of the universe for life from these sorts of considerations. But I haven't myself thought this through very carefully, okay? Mm. My major intellectual task, and I've been working in, you know, mainstream genetics for the last 20 years, right? And since when I retired, I thought I want to get back to, you know, into the anti-Darwinian sort of thing again. And um, so basically my major thrust is that the Darwinian model of the of evolution can't explain things. I mean, that's, right. that, that's that's my basic thrust. I mean, perhaps that's all the only just that's where I'm going. Yeah. So I'm assembling evidence uh, that that won't work, and I think if that doesn't work, ultimately your default explanation is some form of design. Is it fine maybe to say that the Darwinian language and approach is fine for what it's meant to do, a very narrow sliver of it, uh, biological <laughs> phenomena, but all other levels are yeah, yeah, explained right. elsewhere? That's, that's I think correct. Okay, that's good. Um, uh, Michael, I wanted to also talk to you just briefly about, yeah, I know you had read uh, Signature in the Cell by Stephen Meyer. I know we've kind of tangentially touched on this. Can you give me some of your thoughts on the merits of the argument there? Well, I, I think that Steve's um, argument is valid. I think that, in fact, the complexity of things, the best argument for the origin of life at the moment is that it's there by design. I mean, I can't think of any other credible explanation. And uh, basically, origin of life research is sort of, as you probably know, just about packed up. I mean, you can't get funding for it because nobody's making any progress in that area. Is it a pure research and then that's what, there's no commercial application? Is that possibly what's going on? Or It doesn't have much commercial application that I could think of off the top of my head. Yeah. But certainly I think that, in fact, origin of life research is certainly um, not so well funded as it was. Huh. And there's no excitement in the field. Nobody knows where it's going. So if you say, well, how did living things arise? The theory that they have come about by intelligent design seems to me to be, a, it's as Steve says, it's the best explanation of the moment. Now, whether it's will prove right. to be the, finally, whether it's the explanation ultimately that proves to be the, the case, I don't know. But at the moment, I think that Steve is right. I mean, I think it's very difficult to account for the origin of life in terms of any form of Darwinian framework. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm, as I said at the beginning of this thing, I'm immensely impressed by the incredible complexity of biological systems. It blows my mind away just thinking about it, right? And um, I find it very difficult to believe that, in fact, the complexity of life as it's now revealed by science. I find it very, very difficult to believe that could have come about in any sort of Darwinian, unplanned, blind process. What the ultimate causation of it is, I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. But certainly, in fact, I think at the moment, given the, the facts that we have available to us, when Steve says that the origin of life, the best explanation of the origin of life is some form of design, I think that's a valid argument. As Dr. Denton explained, even the lowly and relatively simple red blood cell presents insurmountable challenges to the machine metaphor and to the Darwinian view that generates it, to say nothing of more complex biological systems. Even so, it is too soon to tell whether the view from above will replace the view from below within the life sciences, but Dr. Denton is hopeful that cell biology will lead the way in the near term. 
This is Joshua Youngkin for ID of the Future. Thanks for listening.